Welcome to Century Communications Local Talk. That's right, Local Talk, right here in Centuryland. That's the LA Metro System, Beverly Hills, West Hollywood, Santa Monica, and the great city of Los Angeles. And we also share this with the LA City Community Channel, Channel 36. Local issues, local talk. Joining me on this show are Mary Moore, who's a political reporter. Good to have you, Mary. Thanks, Bill. Ramona Ripson, Executive Director of the ACLU. Good to have you, Ramona. Good to be here. Jorge Flores, a political consultant. Good to have you, Jorge. Thank you. And Robert Stern, who's with the Center for Governmental Studies and good to have you, Bob. You. And my first guest is Michael Feinstein, who's a council member from the city of Santa Monica. Good to have you, Michael. Thanks, Bill. Boy, aren't you smiling today? You're smiling because the Greens have, it looks like, won an assembly a seat in this great state of California up in the Oakland area. Tell us about yeah, it. Yeah, yesterday there was a special election in the Oakland Alameda area, 16th Assembly District, mm. two-way race, only a Democrat and a Republican, excuse me, only a Democrat and a Green, with a level playing field. Voters, apparently, we're up 292 votes, a few more absentees to be counted, but apparently voters Voters are choosing a progressive green over a centrist Democrat. What's and a progressive green? What's a green? What's a green? Green Party. We're all around the world. Ecology, social justice, grassroots democracy, nonviolence. That's our platform. And what we ran on in that area, we ran on single payer health care. Okay? Single payer health care, education over prison building, increasing public transit, core sensible issues, which really are mainstream against the Democrat, which really was associated with the machine. Our campaign statement was vote green, not machine. And what this shows mm -hmm. is that there is a constituency that if our electoral system actually allowed people to vote for what they believe in and elect it, voters will choose Greens and like in 80 some countries around the world where Greens are in government and 25 or 30 where we're in the national legislatures people yep. will vote for us but we have this Neanderthal backwards electoral winner take all system which of course makes it a lot harder for us but as long as the bugaboo wasn't there that oh you're going to elect a Republican if you vote for the Green mm -hmm. voters actually preferred the Green and there happened to be two Greens on the Santa Monica City Council yes, Kevin, right? Kevin McEwen and myself and he just won yeah Kevin Kevin won last year and again we, we felt that a lot of the difference for us was running as progressive Greens versus some very centrist Democrats. Voters in Santa Monica made the same choice. Over time. Back to you with yeah. elections. Yeah, you know, you're talking about more women, more women in government. Uh, we hear about Valley Secession, people feeling disempowered. I understand, Bill, that you had put out an appeal to all the incumbent LA City Council members to come on here for a televised debates to debate their opponents, and none of them would come and do that. We have got people who are entrenched, and part of that, I think, is the fact that we've got an electoral system that makes it very easy for incumbents just to stay there. Something that the LA Charter Commission should have done and didn't do is look at electoral reform, specifically instant runoff voting, where you can rank the candidates in an individual race and if your person doesn't win, your support can transfer to another person, which allows you to vote your conscience. If we had something like that, then it would be much easier for challengers to get support in those races and force real debate. I, for example, as a Santa Monica Council member, mm -hmm. am really concerned that Ruth Galanter refused to come here and debate her opponents, one of which is actually a Green Party uh, candidate. Rex mm -hmm. Frankel. We've got Playa Vista sitting on our border. That project is going to have massive impacts for our community. I would have liked to have had a chance for Santa Monica residents to hear about that, but she refused to come on here, and so well, did the other council members. One of the things that's upsetting to me is the media in Los Angeles. You see, I'm trying to hold as many politicians and offices accountable. I'm doing a series on the on the uh, LA Unified School District. I'm doing a series on the community colleges, some of the other measures on the ballot. And yes, I've been trying to get the incumbents in LA City to debate their challenges, but you know, when the broadcasters and the newspapers were to say there is an election April 13th, there are these council seats, here's what, and put pressure on them, maybe they would act more responsibly that's, for the political process. Mary? Are you suggesting that they're not doing enough stories? On, I'm just on saying that they don't uh, force the people's feet to the fire like they should. They should be calling up these council people and saying, come on into our studios, let's debate. Right. They got a lot more juice than I do. It's it's incredible. Incredible. I think what, happened, what happened in Oakland was that the front runner, who was the former mayor of Oakland, who was a former legislative leader in Oakland, in Sacramento, refused to debate yes. the Green Party candidate. Mm -hmm. You know, this election really was one of the biggest upsets in the history of California. It was like Mike Feinstein running against Dick Reardon and beating him for assembly. From, I mean, your, was, from your mouth to God's ears. <laughs> it was, so Mike, the you question, the, the question well, if they were running for the assembly, wouldn't matter. Right, right. 
The question for you, do you see more upsets like this happening? This was, uh, this was an earthquake, if, if it this was holds an earthquake. up. What this is going to do is going to increase pressure for everybody to be in debates. It's going to increase pressure for public financing for equal access. And the more there, just like the Jesse Ventura race, the more there is equal access and equal public financing, the more we're going to have these so-called upsets, which in my mind really aren't upsets because I think that the green agenda is a lot more mainstream than a lot of this, let's just have power for power's sake that the Republicans have. What happened in Oakland could only happen in that particular <laughs> district. You know, this is a district of 65 percent Democratic. There wasn't a Republican on the on the ballot, uh, so some things were going, you know, were in place for this uh, for this candidate to, well, okay, to succeed. But, but wait, so wait, this wait, is this is a I think a very unique phenomenon. But the race so isn't over yet. When you're, no, clearly we still have to count the absentees. 65 percent Democrat showing right now that a majority of voters still were willing to vote for Green. What that tells us is that there is a large part of the electorate that would elect Greens if we had an electoral system that was only fair, proportional representation. So what I think this is going to do is increase the pressure for electoral change, not just campaign financing, not just public access Great. to debates, but proportional Terrific. representation. Well, we look forward to to not necessarily proportional representation, but but more election reform, campaign reform. We're going to take a break, and we come back. We're going to talk about the um, LAX expansion. But you're in Santa Monica, and a lot of people are fed up with your airport, yes. which is all over our faces. Yes. Is there anything you can do about your airport? Yeah, something that uh, I and many council members have recommended, and what we're looking into now is in the past we've tried to regulate regulate the airport on other levels. Now we're looking at the real environmental impacts because... Could you shut it down well, and turn it into the, a community park the or F housing The or FAA has really been fighting us to try and regulate anything with that airport. If we can succeed on environmental grounds at really showing what kind of problem it may be, we may be able to do the kind of things you're well, saying. Well, you know, here we are, a beach community, densely populated. It's like taking a motorcycle and running it down through a kindergarten playground. I mean, yeah. it has more yeah. takeoffs and landings at that single runway airport than anywhere else All in the nation. All of you who are watching this, you can also call Henry Waxman because we have some, I mean, we're trying to do some things on the local the FAA, level, uh -huh. and we also have to deal with the FAA, and we need help from our Congress people as well. Okay, well, thank you very thank much you for very coming much. on. We appreciate it very very much. And viewers, like I said, stay with us. We're going to be talking about LAX. We're going to take a short break. We'll be right back.